Hey, it's Diego with Amesh Develop. Today I'm talking about using my Polaroid mini portrait out and about on Instax Wide. You can see it's converted there by Beller X612 Instant Back by Lomography. Here you can see the front of the Polaroid mini portrait 203. If you're not familiar with this camera, I do have a video talking about it much more in depth. And if you're not familiar with the Instant Back, I also have multiple videos talking about how I got it converted and what it does. All right, starting off here with the first image. What I did here is took it at multiple distances using the two different focusing. So I took one at 1.2 meters and one at 1.92 meters, which is four and six feet collectively. When I show you the images, they're all, all on Instax wide, but I'd cropped it out to fit the ratio of the video a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for some of the shaky footage. Um, my tripod little mount was acting up and was being really wobbly, but in the later in the video, I corrected after watching back some of the videos, but you can see here, um, this was used with flash indoors. Didn't get much of the background, but I really like how the image came out. On this one, I only did one side and then I turned the camera for the other side. I was trying to do some different effects to show you guys some of the differences and things that you can actually use with this camera and some of the things that you can implement if you did get the Polaroid mini portrait. You can see a divot there on the right. I don't think the rollers are pushing. This was the last one in the pack. It usually doesn't happen, but every once in a while with instant film, you do get some kind of different results. It's pretty cool, but you know, it doesn't happen that often. You can see here, obviously you can go from using two lenses to take pictures at the exact same time, and then you can use one lens to take one picture. So there was the one, and then somebody else can come in and you can take another picture. And this camera reminds me so much of the Yashica Samurai, I believe it's called. It's a half frame camera that's really spiked in popularity because you kind of get more bang for your buck image wise, where you can go ahead and get two images on one frame rather than one image, which is pretty cool. On this image, I was just trying to play around with some of the moves and textures. I'd taken one picture, and then I went ahead and take the second picture. I'm um, not sure what I was going for, but you know, it doesn't hurt to actually just experiment, try some stuff out. Um, doesn't hurt to take some pictures and have some fun with it, so it's pretty cool. You can see here in the clip coming up that my hands are in this kind of strange uh, position. They're actually just blocking out the light from coming in. The LEDs on there are green, they're bright green, and in really sunny situations you can't see them, so I have to put my hands there to block them. Obviously the lenses aren't where the viewfinder is, so my fingers aren't going to show up in the picture. One of the cool things about firing both lenses and taking it landscape wise is it kind of looks like an old um, photo booth picture since you get two images and they come out pretty cool and in focus with the de shallow depth of field it's really nice and it makes for really cool content. Here obviously um, carrying the camera around was kind of a bit much you know we did play volleyball we rode bikes it was pretty cool but it does get tiresome the camera does weigh about five pounds or so. Um, here we took a break at the restaurant Hoagie's and I definitely left my mark. I put one of the Aim Shoot Develop stickers on there. We had stopped into Barnes & Noble to check out some books. There was one that was actually on my radar that I ended up picking up, but definitely cool. We don't go, we don't go in here this often, so made it a little bit of an event. You can see me actually cranking out one of the pictures. I don't do it that often, recording it, because I feel like it's just part of the process, but I'm sure some of you guys actually like to look at it and see how the process goes down. While I'm actually here in the store, um, I didn't want to cause too much commotion and definitely bother some of the other people that were there. Obviously that whole row of people is the people that we came with. So I was trying to compose an image really quickly. And uh, when I do that, I tend to miss the mark a tad bit. I didn't frame the image properly. Obviously you can see you're joking around. The book that I'd picked up is the one on my left arm there, right under. So, um, but you can see the composition of the image is a little bit low. Um, it should be a little bit higher, but that just comes with me kind of rushing the image. Overall, I had a really good time shooting pictures. Here, this is one of the last pictures I took for the day. Um, I had it, I believe, F16 with flash on. I'm doing the same thing to see the LEDs because it was, although it was still kind of bright, um, just getting the picture right and cool. But yeah, overall, I had a really good time taking pictures. 
had a really fun time using the mini portrait camera. Hopefully you guys see this and more people get inspired to buy and use mini portrait cameras because I think they're really fun and cool. Just wrapping it up here, um, pretty much had a really good time, had some fun, took a ton of pictures. There's lots of them that didn't make the cut that I didn't get video of. Um, you can see them on my Instagram if you don't follow it already. It's aims to develop just like the YouTube channel. And if you like this video, there's tons more like it. You can binge watch all my content of instant film, um, aims to develop. You can go ahead and subscribe and check it out. More content very soon. So be on the lookout. Keep shooting film. Take care. Peace.